the question from the Discord server this week is, what can an evolutionary lens teach us about ADHD? Mm. Is it an adaptation, a mismatch? Having been done, the person asks, the person continues, having been diagnosed at an early age, I am now looking for solutions outside of medication. And just, so just to be clear, I'll, I'll pose the question again and let you riff on this. Um, people on either of our Patreons uh, can join the Dark Horse Discord server, and then each week, uh, some group of them vote on which question that has been posed they most want us to answer. So we answer one of the questions that comes off the Dark Horse Discord server every week. And again, this one this week is, what can an evolutionary lens teach us about ADHD? Is it an adaptation or a mismatch or what? Um, all right. So... Uh as always, we need to be as careful as possible because we're talking about a diagnosis of something. And I must yep. say, I am—I don't remember the specifics, but I am certain that I was diagnosed with ADHD at some late point as people were grasping for explanations for my odd interaction with school. He's so problematic. He's so problematic. Yeah. I have a feeling that my odd interactions with school had a lot to do with the fact that school really, really sucked. It traumatized me a little bit and it took me a while to get past it but yes yeah, school should be diagnosed with borderline personality right. disorder yeah it was uh, it was not a learning disorder as my brother says it was a teaching disorder um but okay so the point is this do i believe do i believe in adhd i think at the end of the day i believe that there are some small percentage of the people who have been brought under that diagnosis that probably do have an actual disorder and that the rest are probably suffering from a mismatch between a very, very stupidly constructed environment and their particular predilections, right? Mm -hmm. You are not designed to be sitting in a chair. You're not designed to be sitting in a room with a bunch of other people facing the cave wall as some authority scratches abstractions on it. It's not the way this is supposed to work. And so <laughs> the fact that it works for some people, cool. The fact that it doesn't work for some other people is not necessarily an indication that those other people are badly structured, right? And I could say the same thing about dyslexia, right? Do I have dyslexia? Well, if there is such a thing, I definitely have it. But given that reading is so brand new, how can we say that there's a defect that comes from the fact that a certain number of people aren't as good, they're not good enough at getting the symbols from the page into their mind in the correct ordering, right? That, mm -hmm. you know, that could just be a bell curve of signal processing in which the price of ink and paper has caused us to choose a font size that puts some fraction of us in a category where we're just not above some threshold of acuity, right? Like that doesn't sound like a disorder to me, right? That sounds like a variant variation. So it sounds to me like you've got a serious case of font anger. <laughs> um, yes, I've got a font of anger over the ironic diagnosis of dyslexia, which I frankly don't believe in. And it's not that I'm not against having defects. I've definitely got a color deficiency that's a defect, right? I don't mind. But um, but I do think that there's something awfully opaque about the way medicine goes around um, wagging its diagnosis hammer at stuff, right? It diagnoses pain as a malady in and of itself. Like that definitely should have stopped at the point that Darwin explained how natural selection works. Um, and you know, ADHD, do you have it? You might. It's also possible that the pharmaceutical industry decided they would like you to have it because they have a solution for it. And that solution is speed or something. Um, and if you're in that category where you've been brought under a diagnosis so that somebody can justify writing a prescription that somebody would like you to have because it's profitable for them to sell it, then by all means, get away from those people, right? Figure something else out. And it yep. may involve rearranging the way your life works just so that you're environment is a better match for your mental structures, right? That's, that's the thing. Yeah. And I guess final point, it is amazing. It is amazing. If you just pay attention, if you vary one thing at a time and you pay attention to the inputs in your world and what the result is, what the consequence is for your body and your mind and your psychological well-being, it's amazing what you can find is actually affecting you and cure just by virtue of changing that parameter when you identify it. So anyway, don't give up hope and don't listen too much to people, you know, who are too eager to write you a prescription because um, a lot of those people have ulterior motives. 